Hello, Susan. Good morning, good evening, or good afternoon, depending on where and when you're watching this broadcast. I'm Thomas Fessler, my friends, and this is Disclosure Tonight. Happy Monday, everybody. It's that time of the day, down to the hour, minute, and second, that we're going to take all of our worries and concerns and put them in a box and put them up on a shelf behind us and forget about it because we're going to take all of our earthly worries, all of our concerns, and all of our preconceived notions about those things in the sky, those things that we call UFOs. Now, the government may want to go ahead and call them unidentified aerial phenomena, but here on Disclosure tonight, we call them UFOs. Why? Because there's a word for UFOs in every fucking language around the world. Yes, I'll drop the F-bomb on this one. Why? Because our government hasn't been telling our truth. They've been keeping the facts from us knowingly. They've been spreading disinformation that tons of people out there has been spreading as misinformation. Why? Because there are so many lies out there that it's too much to count. But you know what? Yes, there are ETs. Better yet, they're non-human intelligence. We don't know where the hell they're from. Well, maybe the government does know, but they're not telling us, and they're acting like, oh, well, we don't know anything. If you believe that, man, I've got a freaking castle everybody can come and live in. I've got a great dungeon for the people, especially Susan Go. It's made up in just her special decor. But yes, on Disclosure Tonight, we come together to talk about the latest news, the latest information, and tonight is night, and like no other, yes, we've got a report from all places at <laughs> Ukraine. We're not talking about the war, at least the war of the humans, maybe about the war of the worlds, about, you know, <laughs> they see UAP everywhere. Not like, you know, we see dead people or bad people everywhere. No, we see UAP everywhere. It's one of those things that we're going to take a deep dive into and get to the bottom of it here on Disclosure Tonight. Welcome. Happy Monday, everybody. Yeah, I had a fun time throwing that box around because sometimes we've got to have some fun and be serious about not being serious. Think along those lines. Yes, it's just the chat and myself tonight. Gary, Gary, where is he at? Where can I go ahead and press that button? (laughs) Gary is off tonight. It's his birthday. Well, it's already his birthday, but he's sleeping in right now. He'll be up eventually, and Tom King is well doing what Tom King does best, kicking back, enjoying it, uh, probably doing some sky watching at this point. So if, without any further ado, let's take a, a step back and welcome and see who's in the audience right now. Feigenschau87, hello, DT gang. Oh, I'll have some fun with this. What the hell? Ah, uh, don't move that. Come on, you can get it. Well, that's me upgrade to a new version of obs and i can't even move <laughs> gotta have some fun with it not sure if you're still here if shall but welcome welcome great having you around rasma taz is in the audience talking about the non-human confirmation forced on the pentagon was growing steam on twitter now it goes now it goes down i'm suspicious all right well you should be suspicious about our federal government because you know <laughs> you know you can trust them or not. Greg O'Brien, great talking to you before the uh, podcast or for the live stream, I mean. But you look at that. Hey, hey, Marcus Mandel already throwing some money up on the stage. I greatly appreciate that. Now if I can just cross my eyes and dot my T. Here we go. I want to thank uh, Marcus Mandel for uh, throwing out a five, a five euro at us. My God, thank you, Marcus. Appreciate that. It's just a great way to go ahead and... Uh, support disclosure tonight yeah we don't have merch and we don't do patreon and i guess we could have memberships and stuff but gotta give out a lot already what could i do more beyond this no 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 we're not going there state farm i know what you're thinking (laughs) i appreciate that marcus mandel let's keep the music going as they're welcoming everybody and rachel beal all the way from the united kingdom thanks for coming in rach appreciate you being here today uh, Metal Gaming, all the way from the Netherlands, I believe. Thanks for coming in. And Sven, Eric from Sweden, thanks for coming in, Sven. Appreciate you being here as well. Welcome to the show. Electra RC and Ravenous Ryan. Haven't seen you a bit, Ravenous, but great to have you here tonight. Absolutely. I'll take it. 
I'll take all of yours. We can get my God. What a great show we had on Saturday. Shell Costa, what a phenomenal person. Looking forward to having her back. Hopefully we can get Linda Costa, her significant other, who's a true scientist, and she's got an opinion. You want to hear it uncut, unedited. Drop the F-bombs if you can, if you have to, Linda, because this is the kind of Linda we want to have on. Would you look at that? <laughs> I'm showing some leg. Oh, I don't think you want to see those, but I don't have cankles. I can tell you that. Thanks, Jake from State Farm. Appreciate that super chat. Holy cow. <laughs> Gotta have some fun with that. That's a fact. Our Ranch, Air Gun Fun Channel. Good evening, my friend Thomas Fessler and all Earthlings. Good evening. Good evening to you again. Thanks, Jake from State Farm. And now I'm not going to show some. I always do short. What else? Is not too short. Ah, uh, who else we have out there? Um, Brian, thanks for coming out tonight. Robert Charles Zem, the fourth. Namaste. Welcome. Thank you for coming in, Robert. Appreciate you being here today. You're new to our chat. Hang out a little bit, say some other wise words, and we'll make you give you a wrench like everybody else. Helps fight off the flying monkeys we get from some of the people of the other lives. We haven't had them in a while. Not on that one. <laughs> Pete Liebel. Thanks for coming in, Pete Liebel and the Geezer Prime. Man, you've got a long nose going there, Geezer. What happened to you? But then again, you are a transformed dinosaur. Appreciate you being here tonight. Uh, who else do we have out there? Uh, Chad Farmer Davis, thanks for coming in tonight, Chad. Appreciate being here. Does my sound sound all right? Because I knew it was a little too loud the other day. I've cranked it down, hopefully not too much. Bill H., disclosure tonight from the end of the world to your town. Absolutely. You better believe it. Hello, beautiful people. Not feeling well. Going to bed. See you all on Team Rewatch. One green heart. I know she's not feeling good, but we couldn't get the hello, beautiful, three hearts and a frog, which we still don't know what that means. Anybody knows, put a comment in the video below, please. Gary will read it. <laughs> Kelly bro. Thanks for coming in, Kelly. Love having you here. As well as the George Hernandez. Yes, UFO experiencer and videographer. Thanks for coming in, George. Uh, the Daryl Zernick is in the audience tonight. Chad Farmer Davis is sharing three aliens. Yeah, the question is, what's this thing that they're always in threes? Is it like the magical numbers of the pyramid that Tesla figured out, the 369? Is there something else to it? I'd like to know question that i've had for a while that i haven't been able to figure out <laughs> oh vin man maybe it's for the three-way probes there's one who's got to watch <laughs> with the camera uh i need a cameraman absolutely vin man hey hey everybody happy monday happy monday back to you would you look at that renee cruz tinfoil aluminum cap oh on board i do with mine yes I guess put on your mouse here is everybody tuned in let's get it set to go absolutely but wait 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 hold on hold on a second we got to go ahead and give this to all the people who don't believe these days because they are the ones who should be wearing you know being called the freaks and the people who don't want to believe you know like the flat earthers you know what i'm talking about and if you haven't given us a thumbs up or a thumbs down do us a favor give us your uh, honest rating i i appreciate it more importantly, if you get a chance and you haven't subscribed yet, what the hell are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button. We have a fun time talking about some serious stuff here tonight. And yeah, I can't wait to get to this paper as soon as I finish welcoming the audience. And Pete Liebel, here comes the music. Would you look at that? Would you look at that? Coming up all roses and aliens. Happy Monday, everybody. And you know what that means, Margaret. No, call me Peggy. Peggy, Peggy, how you doing? Hey, Google, what's the temperature in Florida? degrees Ooh. due to the current humidity it feels like it's 92 oh humidity's gone down thank god temperature's up not so bad but uh we're praying for you peggy hopefully that air conditioner has got some more than last legs eli mcginnis hey hey every time i hear eli mcginnis it's a, i feel like someone's got to pour me a guinness i think i will uh do that right now Luke, whenever you're ready, bring it down. <laughs> the Observer is around. Disclosure tonight is like a drug. It's time for your Fessler fix. Thank you very much. I appreciate that, that Observer. Well, oh, would you look at that? It's Mr. Live, Anonymous Rex. 
when are you going live, Anonymous? We'd like to know. Well, sorry, you'll be live on Spaced Out Radio tonight. Man, man, oh, man. Oh, Dave got in some trouble. Yeah, we're going to play a clip about this. I couldn't believe it. Some people were saying, what's this with Spaced Out Radio freaking aligning with Goofon? Oh, yes, and Joe Maguria. Yeah, he's got a clip on that. We're going to be playing that because, you know, the audience brought it up and we've got to bring it back because it's one of those things you say, what the hell did I just hear? You know, rewind it. Yes, but you, you heard right. Agreeing with Goofon. What is this world coming to? <laughs> Greg O'Brien, amen. Amen. <laughs> you know it. Uh, who else do we have out there? Oh, let's take a look and see. Bill H., no, we got them. Got them taken care of. Oh, I'm scrolling way too fast, but I just got to catch up with the freaking chat is what I got to do. Holy cow. I'm only on the Marcus Mandela ready, but we're getting there. Jenny girl. Oh, looking for Tim and Greg. She is looking for a couple rocks, some spare ones. Hmm. Air maybe? Uh, who else do we have out there? We've got J Jean Paul Christian, I think, UFO Disclosure, Andrew Tate in the Facebook Hunter Biden laptop revelations has crashed Twitter. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The FBI censored the American people before the story broke. What do you think? You think that was right? Didn't seem like it was a fake laptop, and especially those pictures. Oh my God! <laughs> oh, who's got the crack pipe? Let's pass it around, please. Oh, that's right, it's Hunter. <laughs> oh, let's have some fun. Yeah, one of those days. It's hot outside here today. Hotter than usual. Got up to eighty degrees, just about. It's gonna be eighty-five here tomorrow morning. Yeah, Pacific Northwest. Yeah, not looking forward to that, but. Uh, no air conditioning, don't need. Just run the whole house fan until the morning when it's like 62 degrees out and then close the windows. House stays cool most of the day. That's why I'm getting a little sweaty here. But hey, you got to work, don't you? <laughs> Marcus Mandel, thanks for coming in. How you doing today? Just Phil. Just Phil? Really? Okay, just Phil. Phil it is. Welcome, Phil. Thanks for coming in today. Nola Dobbins. Dobby's here. Love the show. Quiet but always listening. Thanks for coming around, Nola. I appreciate you reaching out and saying hello. You know what, since you don't say that much, Nola, you're, you're, uh, you've got a wrench. You are a mod. Now, remember, if we see the onslaught of the flying monkeys throwing out nasty names and saying horrible stuff, you know what to do. Freaking boot them out of here. And if you see those bots that come around, you know, the sex bots, you know, the kind that isn't, isn't Elon working on a sex bot? I know it's a bot. But, you know, sex sells, but it's got to have some special inputs and outputs. Ian Hernand, and I don't know where that came from, but it just felt natural. Oh. No, that's not. Ah, that's better. Would you look at that? Would you look at that? He is around. He's in the chat, but he's not in the back. The Tom fucking King. Hey, everyone, hit thumbs up. I'm a bit tired, so crashing early. Oh, <laughs> you're telling me. I couldn't fall asleep last night. I wanted to, and usually it just goes really quickly, but yeah, then Cupcake woke up a couple times, so you know I'm feeling kind of uh, sleepy, not sleazy, but sleepy. <laughs> I could, but nah. Wrong show. Random user greetings. Thanks for coming in, random user. I appreciate you being here today. Holy cow. Oh, God, I got to keep on going. Drink more coffee, Tom. Drink more coffee. Patrick Fogarty, sorry I'm late. No, you're perfect on time. I'm the one who's running late. <laughs> I'm trying, still trying to catch up. What can I say? Hey, I got no respect. Marcus Mandel, say hi to Howie for me. Here is in the audience. It'll be on Space Star Radio later tonight. <laughs> oh, who else do we have out there? Let's see if there's anybody new that I missed. Did I miss anybody? Moi, love you too, Greg. Absolutely. Unless that was for somebody else. Then moi back at you anyway. Oh, just Patrick Fogarty put in a 14 hour day, putting in some more heating and air, more like, well, I've got something stuck in my tooth or something. My tooth stuck on something. Putting in more air conditioning. Great to see you were watching myself along with Cheryl. Again, if you guys didn't catch out the video, we've already got a thousand people who've watched it. Good for Cheryl. She deserves the press. My God, an amazing person. And I think, I think, is that it? Possibly. Yeah. One more thing. One more thing from Tom to say it since he isn't in the back. I don't know where that leads. 
Yes, if you don't know Tom King, you're not going to get to know him because he's not here today. But he's got a great thing to say in the chat, my God. Yes, yeah, I saw the U UCR shitbed. It was the best shit, sh uh, shit the bed I've ever seen. Yes, I know it was like, I don't care about money, but look how much money these guys made. Wow. Talk about a tripolar event. If you haven't seen it, it is like a train wreck. Once you start, you're going to want to stop, but you're going to go back to it and watch it again and again and again. Be sure to go ahead and if you got an ability to download the video, download it. That's the first thing I do because, uh, yeah, you want to get one of those things because it's one of those events that uh, there's a reason why we need to copy that, I tell you. So, <laughs> Yeah, Geezer Prime is saying, I loved when the lady who was bashing called in and she said, yeah, I could have told you uh, doing what you're doing for the big phone home, going in and sending in letters does absolutely nothing. It doesn't do anything for lobbying. Oh, man, that should have burned because that's the whole basis of the big phone home. Because remember, if you're not going ahead and doing the big phone home, if you're not going ahead and sending out these form letters to your congressman, you're not an activist. <laughs> yeah, shit the bed, dumpster fire, and train wreck all in one. Yeah, some people didn't like it, so I had to go ahead and uh, you know cut that out of the last show, but that's okay. Yes, Jimenez was right to call it the Go Gomez Smears. Oh, God, that is just the lightest kind of a piece. If I could go ahead and find that, he's a cunt video about Goofon where he was uh, saying all these nastiness to Lou. It took whatever he said about Christina Gomez. And just kind of uh, like a forest fire versus a ranch. Yeah, absolutely. Chad Farmer Davis, another 499 super chat. Again, great way to go ahead and support everything we do here over at Disclosure tonight. Let me find the music. Moved around, but we'll go ahead and deal with it anyway. Thanks for that great super chat. You know what? We jump in the studio with Tom King, but he's not here. So, you know, before we get to the main topic of it. There's something else to talk about. There's an interesting video. Not sure if anybody has caught it so far. Yes, there is actually a UFO video that supposedly took place <laughs> over at Minot Air Force Base. And I've got it on the map. We're going to go ahead and take a look and see exactly where this little thing took place. Now we're going to ask Tom, where in the hell is Minot Air Force Base? Well, if we go ahead and throw it up on a map here, which I should be able to do. Ah, there we go, Chad Farmer Davis on this side. There we go. Top, there we. Where is this place at, Tom? Well, we're going all the way out to North Dakota. Yeah, sounds pretty good. Up there near uh, Canada, almost. You know the place. Where is that? Oh. Right, Canada. Right, Canada. You know Canada. Absolutely. So if we go ahead and zoom in to Minot Air Force Base, I actually took the time here and everyone went and looked at this whole thing and tried to figure out, okay, we've got the Air Force Base, we've got this UFO sighting that had come up at this part of the United States. And uh, interesting thing, if we go ahead and bring up the initial frame of it, what we have here is we've got a building, right? And on the building, right before the building, can you see this light right off to the side where my mouse is? We've got a little light pole that's there. Well, going and scrubbing through the location on Google Maps in 3D, looking at where all the shadows are going, and it's like, come on, come on, find me a light pole. Because, you know, we could see the planes off in the distance, you know, kind of right over here. They're all kind of lit up and stuff in the distance. But we've got this light pole here. So where in the whole, can't look at that one yet. What am I doing? Where in the heck could this possibly be? And I went from one end of the damn Air Force Base to the other, trying to find a building where I've got a section where we can see some doors, but there's a pole, which means that pole, we, based on the shadows and everything going, should be somewhere about here. Let's bring up that again. You can see where we're dealing with. We've got that pole. And I just went from building the building, the building, the building, the building until I, I don't want the Air Force over there. Where are we going to go past all? We can see the planes in the distance, right? Now we can see the planes. If we get off to the right side of the airfield, son of a gun, we can't see the front of the building. 
But wouldn't you know, this is the only one that has a light pole off by where the buildings are. So I am going to kind of say that, you know, this is on Fighter Drive, right adjacent to it. We've got some kind of a tarmac and everything that's there. And it kind of lines up to where they're doing this. And why am I doing this? Is because I want to go ahead and help connect the video that what we're seeing to actually where this is. Because sometimes people can say it's at this particular location. Sometimes you have to go ahead and find out where it is just to do a little bit of verification. Absolutely. So on that note, let's go ahead and play this little video here and just walk through it. What you're going to see is you've got this uh, little dot here that's going to come close in. And then it's going to do a zoom in as it's going around. But there's some things to look at. So let's go ahead and play this. And kind of see whatever it is kind of descending at this point. There's no flashing lights, nothing like aviation going on that would be happening with it. Little, you know, some pulses going on with the light. Come on. And as we're getting closer, you can now this is being recorded on a security cam. We saw something descend for a bit, and then now we're seeing this little thing coming and coming closer to the camera coming in. Now this is uh this this was definitely recorded off of a security system because you can see the overall can't see it here. Let me move a little bit. You can kind of see the edge of the LCD, the edge of the screen is kind of in there. And as we're going and playing it, it's kind of moving in and out. So this is definitely a recording from a phone or something, probably a phone of another uh, of another screen coming to us from camera six. So with that in mind, let's continue on. No, it's not a seagull, <laughs> John Paul. Especially at night, they're not going to be going ahead. And doing that much now this thing is getting closer it's getting brighter something's going on and they're gonna do a quick zoom in here shortly and uh the interesting part of the zoom in is when we're gonna get it is there's gonna be an interesting shape that's gonna show up so now they're taking the, the footage right we can see this thing it's getting brighter it's getting bigger right let's continue on and now they just zoomed in way too much where we can't see it. Let me go ahead and bring it across. And this is kind of what we're seeing. It's something with something on top, uh, a definite shape. You almost had like a, a stretch of the image going out there for a second. Let's just back up a little bit and watch. There we go. So we've got that. We have some stars off the distance. We've got this object here. Now, here's the thing. Well, no, he zoomed out. We were thinking, could this, whatever he zoomed into and zoom out of be this little light over here? Not, though. Because if we just saw it when he zoomed out, it zoomed out specifically to that location. Now, if that was a light, on the other side of the tarmac. Well, if we go back and look at the map, there are no other lights out here. Granted, there will be lights on the runway and on the tarmac to go ahead and light things up like we're seeing. We're seeing some planes off in this part here that are kind of parked, it looks like. Let's go back to that video again, continue on, and let's play it. Another zoom in going on. Let me see if it will go out of focus. Bringing it back out. Is it gone at this point? There it is. He's trying to zoom in and see what the hell this thing is. And it's interesting when he's a little bit farther out as it's coming in, you're seeing, we're just seeing that diamond shape. Yeah, it looks like the rubber duck. Possibly, almost maybe like that uh, Kelvin UFO a little bit. Let's go ahead and get into there. Let's play this one along here. No sound, unfortunately. Again, if you see the recording date on the bottom of the screen, uh oh. 82722. This is only two days old, folks. 
So this is a recent sighting, something that just took place. Let's continue playing this. Looks like the video uh, the uh, video is paused at this point at 7 minutes and 35 seconds in as he's uh, looking at the stuff. Zooming back out again. Trying to find it, and it's gone. So, interesting thing. Not sure what it could be. If is, is it a flying rat with a flashlight or a flashlight? I don't think so. Internally lit UFO? Yeah, something that is got an energy field around it, and it's putting off energy. And it's something that we've seen in past before. Uh, interesting to say the least. Coming to us from another military uh, body. Um, great to see the military is out there. Is, is still hiding this stuff, but, you know. This is where we're going to get into our top story for tonight. Uh, astro, and there's an astrophysics paper from Ukraine that was submitted to none other than Cornell University for peer review, I believe. And this is coming to us from the National Academy of Sciences, main astronomical observatory, where they have two observatories set up. I believe it's like 112, 120 kilometers apart from each other. And they're both, they were generally being used for looking for daytime meteors, daytime asteroids that would be coming in to the, uh, to our planet, right? So they took this equipment, knowing what's going on at NASA, right? And they've repurposed it and they've used it to go ahead and find UAP. The thing that's interesting is there wasn't one. There wasn't several. There wasn't many. <laughs> we observe UAP of many types everywhere. Everywhere. That is their words. And it's an amazing report that we're going to go ahead and take a document deep dive into because you know why? It freaking deserves it, if you ask me. So let me go ahead and bring this back up again. There we go. There's this. There's the stage going right now. Would you look at that? All right, cool. Would you look at that? A hundred people in the audience right now. We got 42 likes. Do us a favor, folks. Give us a thumbs up, thumbs down, whatever you think. Let's go ahead and get into this now, shall we? Let me get back to this here. Zoom in a little bit bigger. So, again, the document we're looking at is a little too big. Well, you know, let me just. Oh, it's not going to work. So, ah, shrink it to the left. Nope. Bring it down a little bit. I thought I had it a little bit bigger than this. Either way, so we're looking at you know, unidentified aerial phenomena, observations, and events. Let me go ahead and get our marker up so we can go ahead and see where we're going now. They start off the paper talking about the NASA commissioned. Uh oh. Not green. Go a little further. There we go. NASA commissioned a research team, right, that we've heard about this, to study unidentified aerial phenomena, where there are observations of events that cannot scientifically be identified as no natural phenomena. They're looking for it as well. Right now, they're just trying to figure out, oh, what are we going to look at? What is the declassified data that we have access to that will allow us to go ahead and, um, God, that allow us to go ahead and drink more coffee? <laughs> that allow us to go ahead and pick up UAP in our atmosphere, whether it's satellites looking down or telescopes looking up. In this case, we've got two telescopes, that is. The main astronomical observatory of the uh, uh, National Academy of Sciences of Ukraine conducts an independent study of UAP also, saying, hey, just don't forget about NASA. What about us, too? For UAP observations, we used two meteor stations installed in Kiev and Venarkiva village in the south of Kiev region. Observations were performed with color video cameras in the daytime sky. You're taking notes, Tim? <laughs> we have developed a special observation technique, which I wish they'd tell us, for detecting and evaluating UAP characteristics. Now, according to our data, there are two types of UAP which we conventionally call cosmics 
and Phantom. I like these names. We also note that cosmics are luminous objects brighter than the background sky. Call these like our orbs or things that are reflected. We call these ships the names of birds, meaning swift falcon and eagle. Oh, nice. Phantoms are dark objects, like the one we have on video here from Malta, with contrast from, from several to about 50%. So they're not that bright. They're these little dark objects they've got darting around in the sky. They also present a broad range of UAPs. Now, in summary, we see them everywhere. We observe a significant number of objects whose nature is not clear. Flights of single, group, and squadrons. I think that's the first time we've heard these called squadrons, isn't it, chat? Because usually people call them a fleet, but here they're calling them single, groups, and squadrons. Of the ships were detected, moving at speeds from 3 to 15 degrees per second. Some bright objects exhibit regular brightness variability in the range of 10 to 20 hertz. Um, it flashes for one one hundredth of a second on average of 20 hertz. So they're just coming down and showing at how often when they've got the stuff going on it. I miss, miss this part. Two satellite observations or two site observations of UAPs at a base where we go of 120 kil kilometers apart with synchronized cameras allows the detection of variable objects at an altitude of about 1170 kilometers. Let me go ahead and check this. 117. Oh. KM two miles, which is about 727 miles up. Um, it flashes one one hundredth of a second at the average of 20 hertz. We got that. They use col uh, color uh, color met colorimetry methods. Must have that right spot to determine of this uh, to determine of distance of the objects, basically using triangulation, and evaluate their color characteristics. The object colors were an Adobe color system initially because of the cameras, they had, which they had converted to the Johnson BVR astronomical color system, which makes sense considering what they're doing here, using color correction. The phantoms show the character color, color uh, characteristics inherent in an object with zero albedias. They're not reflective at all. It's a completely black body that does not admit and absorbs all the radiation falling on it, meaning all light is being absorbed. There is absolutely no reflectivity coming out of it. We see an object because it shields radiation due to the technique of Rayleigh scattering. An object contrast makes it possible to estimate the distance using colorimetric fields again, methods again. Phantoms are observed in the troposphere at distances up to 10 to 12 kilometers, which is not that high. Uh, we estimate their size from 3 to 12 meters and speeds up to 15 kilometers per second. So they're not moving that fast. But this is kind of the basis of it so far. So what we're getting into is a paper where we've got some real scientists out there with some real observatories that aren't being taken over by the federal government. People are being kicked out because they're observing things. That shouldn't be seen. Well, the thing is, the government acts like we're a bunch of babies. That we can't go ahead and see anything. And just sometimes, when we're going to deal with stuff like this, we need the truth, and we need more of the truth like this. Because honestly, if this is being seen in the United States by observatories, from federal observatories or otherwise, I would almost guarantee that any of this information is being classified as a matter of national security that is not being discussed in the open because they can't. They've locked it up. And if you talk about it, they'll send you to jail. That's what our government does. Daryl Zernick is saying, wow, that's 3,400 miles per hour. Not slow at all. Absolutely, these things are cruising. So they get in here and talk about the Aerospace Anomaly Resolution Office, and their job is going to synchronize efforts in the Department of Defense to help with the cover-up, maybe bring out some truth. We'll see where that goes. And they've been told, if you remember, AARO is not allowed to look at anything that is determined to be of human origin, meaning 
focus on the non-human entities, guys. We're not going to go ahead and want you to spend any money looking at anything, anything that has to do with humans. Just make that clear, Mick West. Oh, and by the way, the easiest way I figured out we can deal with Mick West and a lot of these uh, shysters out there, just don't give them any air. Don't give them any breath. Don't pay any attention to them. Maybe eventually they'll fade away. But if you keep on giving them, you know, ammunition and and uh, uh, vilify them for what they're doing, it's just going to pump them up and make them bigger. That giant guy in the end of, uh, nope. Anyone see Nope out there besides me? I finally saw it last weekend. Uh, found a preview I could go ahead and check out. Interesting movie. You know, it, it's been a while since we've had a, this, a decent UFO movie. Until the end of the movie. Disappointment. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. Uh, Tommy misses. He loved it. Did you like that giant pillow in the sky and like a giant kite kind of a thing? Yeah, the Note movie. It was interesting. That whole vortex into a war, whatever they were doing. Yeah, it was interesting. Yeah, Jordan Pele's. Yeah, interesting. Still don't understand how the monkey freaked out or why that's important, but maybe we will get that eventually. So back to this document. I digress. All right, so let's get past talking about what NASA is doing, what's going on here. So the main astronomical the main astronomical the main in Spain all mainly in Spain the main astronomical observatory of the National Academy of Sciences of Ukraine conducts an independent study of unidentified aerial phenomena in the atmosphere. Our astronomical work is daytime observations of meteors and space invaders. Ooh, space invaders. Dun, dun. Yep, I remember that one. Oh, yeah, okay, so let's get on to this. So unidentified anomalous air and space objects are deeply concealed phenomena. The main feature of the UAP is its extremely high speed. That's one of the things. Not being able to see it in our eyes is another one. Instantaneous acceleration. There's a bunch of stuff that are out there, absolutely. So uh, it's got to be uh, Dr. Hemeltz, or call him that, established that the eye does not fix phenomena lasting less than one-tenth of a second. Meaning if we see something, right, if it's less than a tenth of a second, our brain removes it. Remember, when our brain is seeing images, the image we're seeing now is actually the image we're getting in live plus a bunch of information from the last few images that came together. You know that Im image, uh, what do you call it, when you, uh, uh, we took television sets and went to a higher hertz of refresh, you got that soap, they call it a soap opera effect where everything is kind of really smooth and everything going with it. It's kind of working the same way. So it takes our brain four tenths of a second to recognize an, an event. Ordinary photo and video recordings will also not capture UAP. Remember, when we wanted to go ahead and not Thor the movie, I think we're talking about Thor, the guy who did, uh, maybe not, <laughs> uh, UAPtheory.com. So to detect you, now again, back to that one video we had of a UFO that was flying uh, in the uh, air show in Malta. It was a phantom type. Interesting thing, you wouldn't have seen it, like you said, a regular camera because it's too slow. That video uh, was shot at 240 frames a second on an iPhone. You buy Apple. Um, you wouldn't have had it if it wasn't running at that frame rate. And, and still, at 480 frames a second, it still would not have been a clear image just because these things are moving so fast. So to detect UAP, you need to fine-tune the equipment. Shutter speed, take notes, Tom. Frame rate, write this down. <laughs> Tim. And dynamic range, 14 to 16. That's the exposure. According to our data, there are two types of UAP, which we conventionally call cosmics and the phantoms. We note cosmics are luminous objects that are brighter than the 
background of the sky, right? So cosmics are ones like a cosmic observation. One of those things that's out there that actually is like an orb to a degree, something that's shining that we're seeing through. We call them names of birds, like we mentioned before, swift, falcon, and eagle. You can see the lines and stuff on the sun there. Phantoms are dark objects with a contrast, according to our data, from 50%, 50% to several percent of black or brightness, I should say. Both types of UAP exhibit extremely high movement speeds. Remember, we had that a second ago. Uh, we had some math that was thrown across. Daryl Zernick. 34,000 miles per hour. Stop that. To go ahead and. Uh oh. She fell off her bed. And I need to go replace her. Cupcake the Wonder Dog. Hey, Cupcake. Lay down. Oh. All right. Their detection is a difficult experimental problem. Figured it out. They proved it. Got it. We'll be getting to that proof shortly. My God, they've got a technique that could be reproduced in the United States. If you truly wanted to. Uh, with big tel with decent telescopes and cameras. Not just the consumer kind, the important ones. Now, they are a byproduct of our main astronomical work, which is daytime observations of meteors and space intrusions. Let's move on. So how are they getting all this stuff, right? Uh, reading this, go look at the old painting from Nuremberg, Germany, Thomas Fester. Yeah, I've seen that one. It's the one that was a carving on, on wood where it showed a UFO battle going on. Oh, uh, let's, let's see if I can go ahead and Think what you be what you are talking about. Zoom it up a little bit high. There was a celestial phenomenon over Nuremberg, Germany, on April fourteenth, fifteen sixty one. There were a bunch of orbs. We had stuff that looks like cigars. We have crosses. Like remember, we had the giant cross that was un under water that was looking for the, uh, uh, when, when the Tic Tacs were around. So we've got a, a bunch of the shapes that we're used to seeing in the sky. This is a battle, and it took, it took place, and these things went, and the battle, and we can get into this again. But again, this was a sighting that, yeah, there were some actually ones that actually, if I scroll this up a little bit, yeah, they actually crashed. It was a good battle. And then they all went back into something, and they all vanished. Just like that. Yes, flying flutes, not from band camp. <laughs> Let's move on. All right, observations and my favorite part, data processing. You know, Mr. Decker, if you're wrong, what we've been talking about. Yeah, data processing, that good stuff. So for UAP observations, they use two meteor stations installed in Kiev and the Wiener Rivka village in the south of the Kiev region. The distance between them is 120 kilometers, as we said before. The stations are equipped with, oh, God. Let me go ahead and uh, let's see if I can find this somewhere. Boy, turn this off for a second. I want to go ahead and capture that. I forget if it's on this one. I forget if it's on this particular book, so I hope so. So we can see. Oh, we do. We can see these. This is the, no, I don't want to do that. Let's go to images. So this is one of the astronomical cameras that they're actually looking with. It looks like it's a color CMOS camera. They're not saying what the telescope is, but this is what they're capturing the image with, right? This is something that would screw onto a telescope. That makes sense. And the ASI Pro CCD cameras. Let's see if I can find these. Oh, I think it's another one of these. So 
I guess these are two different uh, cameras that they're using for this. And these cameras aren't that bad. Depending on the one you're dealing with, they can be anywhere from 600 to 1500 bucks. Not bad. Um, and Computar lenses. So we're looking at a Computar lens with a focal length of six millimeters. Let's see if I can find that. Not bad. Computar lens, 300 bucks. Not bad. Again, we're looking at stuff that's for doing observing in the daytime sky. Now, so this isn't going to give us the biggest images, but this is science grade equipment here, folks. So back to the document. Let's continue on, shall we? All right. Uh, now they have a custom program called the Sharp Cap 4.0, which may not be proprietary. It could be something possibly people like Tim <clears throat> could possibly buy was used for data recording. Just a little bit. Observations of objects were carried out in the daytime sky. The brightness of this it's fine. <laughs> the brightness of the sky, depending on the state of the atmosphere and the distance from sun, ranges from three to minus five stellar magnitudes per square minute. They're just saying how bright the sky is. Um uh, Uh, we have developed a special observation technique that they haven't disclosed yet, taking into account the highest speeds of the observed objects. The exposure time was chosen so that the image of the object did not shift significantly during exposure. The frame rate was chosen. The frame rate. The frame rate was chosen to take into account the speed of the object and the field of view of the camera. In practice. The exposure time was less than one millisecond, and the frame rate was no less than 50 hertz. So we've got a camera, and not only are they going and setting the frame rate, they're also setting what is the, it's nice, they're setting the exposure for it. And why are they at 50 hertz? Because they're in Europe, and they're on the uh, Cal standard, where it's 50 hertz, 50 frames a second, instead of 60 frames a second. Now. If they had equipment that maybe was a bit faster, 120 hertz, 240 hertz, they might be able to get something, but they may not get that exposure time. So frames were uh, recorded in a serial format with 14 and 16 bits of color information. Decent color information, absolutely. Viola uh, violation of these conditions leads to the fact that objects will not be registered during observations. Registration means keeping them in the same spot. Remember, we've got two cameras 120 kilometers apart from each other, both observing at the same spot. Yes, I agree, Geezer Prime. I like it too when they detail the equipment used because it gives us a reality of this is the equipment. This is what we're seeing. This is how we're doing this stuff. I still don't have their exact technique. Hopefully that'll come out sooner than later if the United States government doesn't go ahead and make it a, mass, a matter of national security. So to determine the coordinates of the objects, cameras were installed in the direction of the zenith or the moon. Just making sure they're all pointing and they've got a central point for registration. So results. Here we go. This is the good part. Figure one. Hang on a second here. Get that in a sec. Figure one shows an ordinary swift object at a rate of at least 50 frames per second. Remember, the swift objects are the ones that are luminous, like that one here and that one over here. Two consecutive shots, which we just saw. The bright object in figure one shows a, a consistent brightness. Figure five shows an image of an object about 10 pixels in side, size which indicates the final dimensions of the object and a contrast of about 20%. Figure six shows a color diagram uh, of the object in RGB filters in the Adobe Color System. Object colors can be converted to the Johnson, equip, uh, Johnson standard for astronomy. So if we go ahead and take a look at some of the stuff, let me show my glasses here so I can zoom up. First, we've got it. These were the two objects, I believe that they were going and getting. And here we've got 
a close-up of these particular objects and you're saying, Tom, they're just dots. Yeah, but when you have cameras that are set up like this, yeah, <laughs> we've got two dots from two different cameras, which means we are looking at real data. Yes, this is real data that can help others, absolutely, in our observation of this stuff. So let's get across this next one. This is another picture that they have the moon, of the moon. And this one has many of those objects. One thing I immediately noticed is, would you look at that? There's that typical triangle formation we've got going on with all the luminous objects. We've got another one over here, another one over here, and two more moving around. Oh, it gets a lot better than this. Let me tell you. Oh, let me tell you. <laughs> it got such a deal. So figure one is the two consecutive shots of a Norton ordinary swift object at a frame of 50 frames per second. Figure two, a group of luminous uh, different uh, objects of different brightness against the background of the moon. That's the one we just looked at. Now, if you want to get into the math, we can do that someplace else. It gives them the actual formula that they've used. So if you math heads out here want to go ahead and figure it out, this will tell you some of their secret sauce of how they made it to actually compare it. So this formula makes it possible to compare the colors of the object with the colors of the reflected solar radiation. Solar radiation colors are the BV, this part of the formula. The colors of the radiation of the object is this part of the formula, which significantly exceeds the colors of the radiation of the sun. Now, figure, where's figure two? No, we got to get to that one. I think figure two is above. Uh, figure two shows a group of luminous objects. They're calling it a flotilla of class of swift of different brightnesses. Objects move at different speeds, right? It's up a little bit higher. Different speeds. Objects move at different speeds in different directions. Figure three shows the transversal velocities of the objects. These velocities are represented by segments of straight lines. They are obtained from the positions of the two consecutive images. Figure four shows that the speeds correlate with the brightness, namely the greater brightness, the greater the speed. Yeah, but sometimes when it works and there's stuff's going on, there's a lot of stuff in the phenomena I just don't understand. There's a lot of stuff. I mean, remember they said, the earth is flat. The earth rotates around the center, you know, the universe rotates around the earth. There's a lot of stuff that they've told us in our ancient books, our ancient religions and everything. So seriously, when I start off the show, sometimes I say we've got to take our preconceived notions and what we understand, put it in the box, and put it on the shelf behind us. Sometimes we need to because some of the things that we think are real aren't, and some of the things we think aren't real really are comes down to a bias that we all are part of. Now, figure four shows that the speeds correlate with the brightness, okay? So, would you look at this? Let's go ahead and zoom up. So these are the luminous objects, I believe, and they're showing the directions of how far they're moving and how, based on the distance of what their observations are, they're showing it from where it started to where it went to. The faster the object, Right, the faster the object, the more luminous it's going to be, which this picture here shows exactly that. So we'll get down on the text. Figure 3a, uh, a composite image with the br bright swifts, segments of straight lines are proportional to the transverse speed. They also do go ahead and plot it out on a graph. Figure 4, the intensity of the objects versus transverse speed, showing how they actually line up. And then figure five, the swift is the object of the end sizes. So they're actually looking at the uh, colorometry of the actual object to see what's actually getting in there in greater detail. And then, of course, looking at the RGB emission spectrum of the, or of the ordinary, as we're calling it, swift object. Well, believe me, believe you me, these are not just ordinary objects. I'll tell you that. There's something more. Let's move on. So. How are they figuring out how far these objects are? 
well they know the the two the two observatories are 120 kilometers in, in in distance so taking that into mind the colors of the object and the background of the sky make it possible to determine the distance using color metric methods the necessary conditions are Rayleigh scattering as the main source of atmospheric radiation two the the estimated value of the object's albedo. The object partially shields the diff diffuse uh, sky background and thus becomes visible. The scattered radiation intensity observed at sea level has the form. So they're going to get into the whole math on this here, which we could get into. If that's okay with everyone else out there. Patrick. Three minutes later, yes. <laughs> you know, I actually had new SpongeBob SquarePants app, and I was actually paid to go ahead and watch SpongeBob SquarePants episodes. Yes, but they're my jokes. So we do. <laughs> Thus, by measuring the difference between the stellar magnitudes of an object and the sky background, one can find the magnitude of the air mass before the object. They used an approximiz uh, approximation of homogeneous atmosphere for the calculation. Oh, the homogeneous atmosphere uh, approximation assumes that the entire atmosphere is concentrated in the troposphere, which is about 8 to 10 kilometers up, and has the constant density in the approximate. Okay, we're, let's get past this math part some more. In the real atmosphere, the number of scattering centers at a height of 10 kilometers increases by a factor of 2.5. So the higher up it goes, the less bright the objects are going to be. Again, getting into the meat and potatoes of this overall piece. Um, so figures 7 and 8 show the image and color charts of the phantom object. Well, phantom objects, these little black suckers, yeah. Looks just like that little bastard we saw in that uh, video over uh, Malta. It's black, not putting off everything. People said, oh, that's a bug. Okay, no. <laughs> now, the object is present in only okay, in one frame which allows us to determine the speed of at least 52 degrees per second. Remember, these are the fast ones. Yeah. Orbs are slow. Phantoms are really fast. Taking into account the angular dimensions of the frame. That's just saying how much space across the sky and how fast are these things going. Figure 8, literally figure 8. Shows the color characteristics inherent to the object was zero albedo, albedo, basically showing that the object itself drops down to zero and was zero R, G, and B when they're checking it out. This means that the object the uh, this means that the object is completely black that does not emit and absorbs all the radiation falling upon it. So no reflections, no nothing. We see an object only because it shields radiation in the atmosphere due to the Rayleigh scattering. An object contrast of 0.4 makes it possible to estimate the distance of the object as about 5 kilometers up, not that high. Uh, the estimated angular velocity given above makes it possible to estimate the linear velocity is not less than 7.2 kilometers per second. Again, phantom object, color shark, they just talk about. Figure 9 down below, which we'll be getting to, shows, uh, shows the shoot of another phantom object against the background of the moon at a rate of at least 50 frames per second. Figure 10 shows the color diagram of the object and the moon and the RGB filters in the system. Figure 11 shows an object contrast of about 3. Which ones are we talking about? We're talking about... This one here, a phantom object against the background of the moon. They're showing the color, uh, the color diagram of the object itself. 
Um, this one here is showing the color diagram of the local facility all the way down to black and the color diagram of the Phantom. Again, they're really delving into the color, the makeup, and everything we're seeing here. Why? Because it's important for all the people who want, want to be like Mick West and go ahead and tear this down. They're giving some really heavy-duty scientific numbers of facts that are important, and there's just a lot of detail in here. But basically, they're showing that, you know, what they're seeing up there is truly there. What they're recording and what they're observing is repeatable. It's reproducible 100%. I need to go find this up for real soon. Check this deck for the solar eclipse. Thank you very much for the program. Thought I got rid of it before. Where is that one going? That one is going to be I should take care of the noise. Sorry about those noise machines. Yeah, it's crazy stuff, Kelly, I tell you. All right. What did Kelly say? I missed something. Hey, I was not rude, Patrick. Just said I don't seem to understand English. If you think what be yeah. out. It's okay. Not everyone. And here's the thing. Even if you you speak English natively, you're going to take two different people from two different parts of the United States, and you're going to have a sentence. And two different people are going to read that sentence and read and, and hear something different. Ask lawyers. They do it all the time. I don't have the time. I have less than an hour for the T form to do this stuff. Yeah, they do, honestly. I'm doing the wrong thing, I think. But either way, and you're not being rude. It's just his language of where he's at. It's not the same. So just take it with a grain of salt, and we'll all be fine. This sounds like a little trap. Absolutely. Okay, so let's move on with this and get into it. So this is the next one they're showing. Composite image with a phantom object and bright swift. So we've got one object that's moving at a fast speed. That's why we're seeing a jump from location to location to location, as well as some of the bright swifts. So it's not like you're getting one object completely different from the other object. They're all mixed up. There's a there's a, a variety of of configurations of what we're currently seeing in the sky, and it's amazing stuff. Now, getting into it, uh, figure 16 down below is going to show the light curves of two bright swifts at a sample rate of uh, 20 milliseconds. One swift dem demonstrates regular intensity variations of about 25 hertz. Another shows variations about 10 hertz, different speeds. Figure 17 and 18 show UAPs over Kiev. Ooh, let's go find those. Yeah. What do you think? There's things in the sky. Like they said, they're seeing these things everywhere. And yes, they aren't weather balloons. They aren't drones. Does my audio keep on dropping out? Yeah, probably because I'm moving away from the mic, hopefully. Uh, we're, we'll skip the math. Don't worry about it. Hopefully the audio isn't. I'm moving away from it. It's my fault. Hopefully my audio is fine. Thanks, Audi. All the way from India. Absolutely. Let's go ahead and just go back a little bit. So coming into this, yes, we'll get past the math on this one. What they're going to be coming into is we, uh, they're saying is we can see the objects are moving at different speeds. So it's not like all of these things are all moving at exactly the same speed. They're all moving at different rates, which is a cool thing to show that yeah, we've got interesting things that are happening. Well, breaking news, in about an hour, I will have a big story posted of a UFO UAP encounter from a military F-18 F pilot flying a private charter that just occurred over L.A. airspace. Interesting. Thanks for uh, sharing this, uh, Salameb. Well, I greatly appreciate bringing out that news. Look forward to possibly covering it tomorrow. Share the details if you possibly could. We would greatly appreciate it. Uh, Austin Gilbert is saying, sad that such a small percentage of people could understand this. Well, a lot of them do. Some of them don't. Some of them, this is just some heavy-duty uh, astrophysics math that not everybody is doing. So it's just one of those things we have to take a look at, like my audio setup that I know that I changed. <laughs> I turned down the 
hopefully it's a little bit better now. So yeah, it's okay. How many people have gone and actually taken pay, uh, classes in astrophysics? Raise your hand, please. <laughs> Not a lot. So let's continue on. So let's get into some other additional details on this. In figure 19, where is figure 19? Figure 19 shows a composite image with a bright Falcon Swift and a high-speed Phantom. There's a Swift probably, and there is the Phantom, I believe. Uh, figure 20, the Phantom crosses the image of the Falcon. So they're actually seeing, oh, here's the high-speed Falcon. It's that little bastard right there. It's moving so fast, it's leaving a trail behind it. My goodness. Patrick Fogarty, I have a hand raised. Kelly Broad, I found that uh, that Cheryl said there was no connection to nuke silo uh, to nuke silos other than they were well staffed and looking up all the time. No, I think she was talking more about not the nuke silo. She was talking about the nuclear power plants, at least from the sightings that they've gotten. Again, remember Cheryl deals with the data that's coming from the general public, not stuff that's coming from the military. Two different types of data. So Cheryl is not going to be cued into a lot of the stuff that the DOE would be reporting internally up through the DOD if they were paying attention or would be recorded by the, uh, the Air Force, which they haven't been telling a shit for that matter. Uh, um, Cheryl's main statistics, I believe, were coming from uh, MUFON and the National UFO Reporting Center. So that's why she would not have all of the data. Again, she only has some stuff. Steve Martin is my wife. I had no idea you swung that way. Interesting. It's always like a, like a, what do you call it? Saloon doors. <laughs> Just got to make sure it's not hitting you in the, on the, it's on the way out, which could be in its design. All right. So getting down into two site observations showing the same object from site one going off to site two, both showing the moon, but basically going and showing here are the two different objects from the two observations, showing what it looks like from both sides. Again, very important for us to understand. Yes, they do have two uh, uh, observatories. Yes, they're both looking at this stuff. And this is how it actually looks when they're going through the data in a scientific manner. Aviam says they see them everywhere is what the paper says. So much so, they have named them like puppies too. <laughs> and based on shape too, clearly asteroids won't have the same shape and won't say stationary. Yeah, and they won't be moving at different speeds and different directions and all this kind of stuff. This is very uh, interesting information to say the least. Let's move on a little bit. Two objects showing the two different light curves coming out of it. This is where the math gets charted into something. That's a little bit easier to understand. Grass. The light curve rate uh, sampling of 125 hertz, just how fast the stuff is coming. Yes, Kelly Broad, it is freaking, it is fucking cool. Absolutely. It's not that often that we're seeing this kind of documentation out in the general public. This is generally reserved for the military, for NASA, for the science. Come on, NASA, up your game. I'm sure you've got a lot more equipment. All the stuff we have in Hawaii, all over the place, all these observatories. And you're going to tell me that we've had our head in the frickin' sand like an ostrich in a, in, down in Australia? I don't know. I... Okay, I have a poll on this one. I've got a simple question. We're going to do a survey on this one. I haven't gotten there yet. Let's go ahead and do that. Uh, is NASA lying to us about what they know about UFOs? This should be an easy answer. I think everyone is probably going to say yes. We'll find out. Let's go ahead and get that music kicked up. No, we'll get to that one in a second. Oh, where did that go? We got a survey up. Let's go ahead and see where everybody is. Well, come on, guys. Go ahead and vote. We've got 15 people Voting already. 
Let's go ahead, increase the size of that, bring it up a little bit more. So far, 19 votes in. This is an interesting one. 95% of the people said is are saying yes, NASA is lying to us about what they know about UFOs. What do you think? Go ahead and vote. We're going to keep this open for another, you know, 30 seconds to a minute, see where it goes. 96%, 24 votes in, saying yes. Where do you sit? I know if I was voting right now, I would say yes, because I wrote this. And just because, well, we've seen NASA doing this for a long enough period of time, up to 27 votes, still saying about the same. Well, we're at 96, 97% and 3%. Almost there. 29 votes in, still 97% and three votes. Well, as soon as we get this down to 30 votes, one more vote coming in. Come on, give us one more vote. Come on, someone. Get us up to 30 votes. Let's see if we can get us there. Almost there. Or is the, is the chat voted out? It looks like we're only going to get 29 people participating in the votes right now. Let's go ahead and end the poll. There we go. And stop the music. Uh, Jim Grim Reaper says, Seeker says, everything leaves an energy trail. Truce? Possibly. Nice. Uh, be nice to Australia as we may be the only country to survive a pole shift. Well, true. One of the places we know always seems to uh, survive it. I believe it's uh, Mount Kilimanjaro in Africa. Cause Mount Kilimanjaro, they got like trees from the dinosaur time. I mean, <laughs> they're very fucking old and they survived for a very long time. I mean, absolutely. Let's go ahead and jump the chat back up again off the board. So, uh, yeah, NASA's not that truthful to us. So, what are these guys' conclusions? Yeah, but uh, it seems every, all, all the rich people are actually going and, and building and getting bunkers out in uh, Wyoming. And the really rich ones are building their bunkers up in the mountains in Colorado. Safest place, I guess, according to suspicious observers. That's right. That's right. That's right. That reminds me. I need to go here and check this really quick. Uh, I think today might be a good night to go out and look up. Let's take a look and see. I remember seeing this. Mm, now, we might be getting a good uh, Aurora Borealis coming in. Um, I thought it was going to be tonight. We'll see where it's going to go. We'll have to go to the Space Winter Weather Prediction Center to see what it's going to be, but it's not happening yet. Yeah, there's been a lot of good, great activity going on in the sun. So back to the conclusion. The main astronomical observatory of NASA of Ukraine conducts a study, talked about what they dealt with, the observations were performed in the color daytime sky. There are two types of UAP. We talked about this, cosmics and phantoms. We observed a broad range of UAPs everywhere. <laughs> we observed dot, 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 UAPs everywhere. That's where we got our title card from, folks. I didn't make it up. That's okay. Dot, dot, dot. Just so you know. We state a significant number of objects whose nature is not clear, meaning what are they doing up there and why are there so many? Is this that somber moment? Is this that somber time when people realize how many are actually here? You know, there could be millions of them living under our oceans, underground, under our oceans. And you just ought to ask the question. I was in a conversation with Greg about this before the show throwing up my theory on this. I could be wrong, but I could be right. Now, imagine on land, besides being exposed to the elements and giant waves that come over, when you get, there's been a lot of uplifting in the land over time when there's been major earthquakes, major, major cataclysms, there's a lot of fractures that go on, there's a lot of uh, you know, movement of the land in opposite directions, there's a lot of stuff that goes on on the land, especially when the earth wakes up and gets angry. Even volcanoes and stuff, it just goes over everything. Here's the thing. When you have all of the weight of a mile and a half of water sitting down on 
the seafloor, that creates on pressure that's going to hold that land in place, that it's going to keep it from completely lifting up and going crazy. Granted, it can happen. Needless to say, do I need to bring up, was it Thailand several years ago? That wasn't Thailand. When we had that, uh, uh, that was back in 2009, 2010. I had, I think it was right before my next surgery. It was 2000. We had that big, huge tsunami that came in and pulled all the people out to the ocean. Yeah, that thing that happened. We had a little bit of a shift of the ocean, but not like what happens on land. So if there's a reason why they're so far down in the ocean, just to stay the fuck away from man to make sure we can't get to them, it's probably also for the safety that all of that pressure from all of that water sitting on top of that land makes it probably some of the most stable ground or stable bedrock that you're going to find on Earth. Go where it's safe, right? Especially if you're going to be here for a long time, maybe millions of years. Not just be millions of years. Millions. Yeah. All right. So flights of single, group, and squadrons. We didn't use the word fleet, but I'll take squadrons of the ships were detected moving at speeds from 13 to 15 degrees per second, which came in about 34,000 miles per hour or so. They're not slow. Some bright objects exhibit regular brightness variability, meaning how fast they're potentially going. There could be so many of them. Jean, Paul, Christian, like ants. I don't know. Two site observations of UAP, uh, 120 kilometers apart with synchronized camera allowed the detection of a variable object at an altitude of 1170 kilometers. It flashes for one hundredth of a second at an average rate of 20 hertz. Remember, we've seen this before. We've had uh, um, different uh, observers go out there and say that they flash every uh, so often. Um, Jim down in Tacoma has shared some videos with me, amazing videos. And you get that little uh flash that goes on every so often it's just something that goes on we don't know why but it's definitely not a plane and it's definitely not flight lights uh the phantoms which are the black ones show a characteristic of an object which is completely black we see an uh, and it all, uh we see an object because it shields radiation due to the rayleigh scattering and object contrast made it possible to estimate the distance using color metric methods Phantoms are observed in the troposphere distance up there, up to 10 to 12 kilometers up. We estimate their size from 3 to 12 meters and speeds of about 15 kilometers per second. Again, these are the faster ones. So, what's the moral of the story? Well, this isn't just an observation. This isn't a video. This is a scientific paper uh, submitted to Cornell University. Where uh, for a peer review where they've got advanced technology and can we talk about Russian advanced technology? <laughs> Is there such a thing? I don't think so. I wish so. But I don't think so. If they had it, they already would have been using it in Ukraine. Let's just put that down. <laughs> oh my God, we're worried about the Russians. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just have to laugh. Oh, Chinese, yeah, we got to worry about more than them. Uh, but, uh, God, yeah, Russia's in self implode. Who knows? We'll see where all that goes. So, we, you know, we've got science fact out here. We've got papers that are coming in. We have observation methods. We've got formulas. We've got everything. Okay, NASA. Okay, Avi Loeb. Frickin' up this one, shall you? Let's go ahead and see what you can see, because you know what? But, you know, they've only got one observatory on one roof at one university, and they're going to have another one. They're going to have another one. Hell yeah, these Ukrainians, they've got it set. They've got this freaking figured out in a way that, well, no one else in the world is doing right now. They've scooped the scoop. <laughs> they've taken the air out of the DOD. 
send to Dr. Gary Nolan. I'm sure he's seen this. Margaret, I mean, Peggy. And that's right. No reason to be, to be scared. They've been around for a really long time. It's not like they just showed up. It's not like they just showed up 70 years ago. These things have been around like insects for a very long time. We just haven't had the techniques and the methods to go and look for them. Remember, we had all this disinformation going and taking and relegating anybody who claimed they saw UFOs to a freaking freak, to someone who's hanging out in the, uh, what do you call it? They're either in the, in the bulk foods with the fruits and nuts, or they're hang, hanging out with us, uh, uh, Sonny from the Fruit Loops collection over in the cereal aisle. The truth of the matter is, this is getting deep. We're getting into fact. That's the part I love the absolute most. So on that note, let me go ahead and go across to some of my bookmarks and Twitter, see what we can go ahead and find out here, see what's going on in the world of UFOs outside of a scientific paper. I hope you guys have enjoyed this uh, so far. Let's have some fun going through social media and see who's bitching about what (laughs) and who's bringing out some fact, shall we? All right, let's move on. Uh, We already saw that one. Klaus is asking, you can't keep technology secret without keeping the scientific discoveries that led to them secret. Meaning, I believe Klaus is, hello, Gary. Um, Different Gary. I, I think what we're talking about here is that if we have these advancements in technology, like quantum computers, like fiber optics and, and such, and the transistor and the, and the microprocessor and all the stuff that we got from it, it's going to be hard to keep the scientific discoveries that led to the secret secret forever, which means he wants to know, I wonder if civilian scientists are catching up. Well, if we're talking about catching up potentially to what's being discovered, well, yeah, once we can get access to the craft and we can work with it in a true non-just get it again top secret manner then maybe we can make some real advancements get it out of the hands of the freaking government is where this needs to go and where we are going um that we done the one there Coming from Christopher Mellon, the Christopher Mellon. If you don't know Christopher, he's one of the guys who was, God, he was, has been in the government for a while. He's been working behind the scenes with uh, Lou Elizondo and uh, Dr. Gary Nolan. You know, and he's always got a bunch of really good questions. Just are bringing up the way they should in Congress, at least not yet. One of the key questions for Congress to pursue concerns anomalies in space. We have some 29 distinct space surveillance systems, and that data cannot be explained away as balloons. Absolutely, Christopher Mellon. Let's take all of our scientific platforms we have, and let's pull it. Let's open source it. Let's make this a public effort and just get out of the hands of the goddamn DOD and the military. I'm getting tired of that. I'm sure a lot of other people are, and they can say, oh, this is national security is sacred. We can't go ahead and share that because the Chinese or the Russians may. Fuck, they already know. They're already doing the same shit we have been doing, if not more, for a longer period of time. So to say we can't go ahead and talk about this, we have to keep everything hidden. Why? Because they want to keep the public in the dark. I'll put my freaking name on that one. Stamp it. Okay, Science Bob on again tonight at Space Start Radio. Maybe to elaborate on his fine Friday night angry Bob discourse. Yeah, I heard he got kind of angry and kind of went off a bit. And I think, go back to here. Coming from Joel McGurk. There we go. UFO. I am accused of creating drama. This is your show space dot radio explain what you guys meant right because there were a bunch of people goof on our crackpots just be real about it. i know but we're about to dump into that and jump into that goof on theater why oh let's do 
tone this down a little bit. What we think is happening isn't happening. And what we know now is, ha uh, is happening isn't what they're showing us. Hmm? They and Rich G is probably more right than he knows. About what? Let's watch this little video from Oh, look, would you look at that, though? Would you look at that? Ah, he tagged Lou. Hey, uh, Jennifer, <laughs> there's something in your inbox. You should watch this video. Oh, there's Lou's picture, but hey, Jennifer, I don't want to get into the social media. Thank God. Let's take this one. Thomas Fesser, all you need to know is Joe questioned what Bob Dave said about a few things. Bob will be on SOR tonight to talk more about it. End of entire situation? Hell no. I, our audience went and brought this up on Friday, I think. I think it was Friday or Saturday. I think it was Saturday. They brought it up, and I didn't know what the hell they were talking about. So, to be clear, it's happening. let's go ahead. We're going to play the video, and I'm going to let the audience make a determination about what's going on, right? Let's go ahead and play it. Yep, Avi M., I brought this up last time. Thank you, Avi. Let's go ahead and check it. And uh, yes, we don't have to mention. No, not that one. I'm sorry. Where'd it go? We don't have to mention the wicked rich of the East. No. Let's, see. Let's play this one. I know the pieces of the puzzles are starting to fall into place. Oh, and they're not falling where anybody thought they would. No. No, that they're not. And it's, I will say this. I'm going to be very vague with our UFO audience right now. I'm going to be very vague. But once again, take my advice. Read between the lines. This is what I am yeah, learning amazing. very fast over the last couple of months. Okay. I'm going to say the last seven to ten months. What we think is happening isn't happening. Correct. And what we and what we know is happening isn't what they are showing us. That's correct. And those who which is correct because based on what we just saw happening in Kiev, everybody happening in Ukraine, that sure and fuck doesn't line up anything to anything that our government has shown us. Continue are in the, allegedly in the corner of everybody. Let me rewind this. Our That's correct. I'm rewinding it again. And those who are in the, allegedly in the corner of everybody are only in the corners for themselves. Absolutely. They're not in and the corner for everybody else. They're only in the ring to win. Yes. And they will. Come on, don't you remember the saying from Amer uh, American Idol? You're in it to win it. You know? Is that, yeah, it was American Idol. They will screw, they will screw Grant Cameron. They will screw anybody we love. Only on OnlyFans. Mm-hmm. What do you mean screw yeah. Cameron? What do you mean by that? Um, that part I don't want on the show. No, it's, just, I agree. We, I agree. We are still alive. I agree. I agree. It shouldn't be on the show because we're still alive. But and man, I, I will say, really I will say this: there is someone in our chat room tonight who has been preaching this message for a while, and a lot of people hated him for it. But he is probably more right than he knows. I couldn't look. I couldn't understand. Oh my God! It's the wind beneath his wings. Let me let Cup do that. We gotta think about that. Sorry about that. Yeah. Let 
anymore here. And why, why Richie and you and all of us broke up, but I, he oh, was frustrated. Fault. No, it no, was no, completely. No, no. Okay, great. So, so but I, he oh, was frustrated. Now he's trying to make up and say why him and Richie broke up, that it was his fault. No, no it was no, completely. No, no. Okay, great. So, so, but, but I, I understand, but he was, he was really upset. I knew he was upset with you. I couldn't quite understand the upset, but as I have come to understand what is truly happening, Rich has reached, reached up and said, said in my mind, the guy knew something was wrong way before the rest of us and the rest of oh, us yeah. are catching up. Well, you heard it with your own ears. Oh, but they're bleeding. <laughs> Did I really hear that? Oh, okay. don't tell me it's not so. Oh, my God. Okay, that screws everything. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> isn't so but then again it is over on space start radio the place of woo and everything and they do talk about a lot about bigfoot and other kind of stuff so they may have some good things but we do have science bob maybe we can bring science bob on here to talk about i mean this whole video just took the whole chat conversation it's everyone sitting behind besides themselves because you know what i've got to do that right now i am literally Where am I? Here I am. Where is, where am I at here? Jesus Christ. Copy. Ah, paste. All right. I am sitting besides myself in amazement right now. I had no idea that I would ever hear that. So, <laughs> let's see if I can go to this one. Can I take this one and transform? Is it going to do everything? Flip horizontal. Oh, there we go. Tom. Tom, Tom, Tom. Did you believe that you would be seeing this stuff? Wait, wrong way. Did you believe that you'd be seeing this stuff? No. Never. This is a good way for me to have someone to talk with at the same time. But my God. <laughs> I don't know how to deal with this. But either way, let's move on. Let's move on to see what's out there. Ah, uh, so. Space Start Radio supporters, Lou Elizondo, Minty Hyperspace, and Chris Mellon, and Gary Nolan, and George Knapp, etc. Also, before you spew and create drama and hatred, worry and concern yourself with your own great work that you are producing. Have a great day. Joe. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm I'm not here for myself. I'm here for the audience and everybody else. But uh, yeah, I hope that hat tastes good. <laughs> yeah, we're all sick of the lie. Don't freaking give Richie freaking power. Don't say his name three times because he might get fired. Bob Burke. Yeah. All right. Let's move it on. Yes. Hold on. After that, we need something to cleanse our mind, shall we? Let's go ahead and find this. If I could find my, uh, where is it at? I just want to make sure I'm not going to get hit by the Jannies. Where is it at? Cat. Uh, it's got to be here. I know it's here somewhere. Here we go. Filters. Let's take this a little bit here. Take the opacity down. Let's just watch some true Kung Fu Panda, shall we? On top of the earth. <laughs> Any new UFO videos or photos? Well, with George, we've gone through a bunch so far. This is just something that's out there in everything. Yes, we've got to have some fun with some pandas. Cleanse our mind, cleanse our brain from that horrible thing that just happened. I've never seen this before. It's freaking hilarious. Let's get through it. 
NASA studying UFOs is great. What about them? What's he talking about? He's talking about the European Space Agency. We got stuff from Ukraine. Come on, Europeans. Give us the mother load. Drop some information as well. But yeah, that's a good one. Unidentified fuzzy object. Yeah, absolutely. I hear you, Austin. Thank you very much. Uh, let's move on a little bit. Coming from Klaus, if our DNA is programmed to have expectations of our environment, get a little science here, then an advanced civilization, civilization just has to alter what we perceive to impact our evolution. Remember, perception. Person sees one thing, another person sees another. So what is he saying here? Oh, from Gary Nolan. The DNA embodies the expectation of the environment in which you will live and grow and become. So all the information that is you is actually not only embedded in the DNA, but it's also embedded in the context of the world in which you grow and develop. So all that information is packed into the expectation of what the DNA expects to see. Good one. Absolutely. Oh, uh, this is coming in based on what Bob said, a bunch of different things. We're actually going to quote a book, a reading from the book of Tom DeLonge. They don't know on some of this stuff, but we do know it has the power to direct how mankind evolves over a very long period of time, potentially in cycles. Because when you look at the Giza pyramids and some of these other places, there are some grand cycles that we're starting to discover with mankind. We're kind of going, quote, okay, maybe we're a little bit older than 3000 BC. Absolutely, I would agree. Blues Cruise is a little bit delayed, but that's okay. Having some fun. Let's get through this. All right. Um, Phillips and Raytheon. Oh, yeah. Here's a good one. <laughs> oh, we had a little quote, uh, quote on there earlier. We had someone saying, I didn't catch it first, JC, new follower. Congratulations again, JC, if you're watching this on that special other person you brought into your life. Congratulations. He's saying, new Skinwalker Ranch, Dino Beaver, Hitchhiker Ghost in the Pentagon and OSAP. He's saying the mainstream media outlet report is finally reporting on Skinwalker Ranch. And I was like, wait, it's Green Street, though. <laughs> Who replied back to me within minutes of me doing this? Stephen Green Street himself. The emperor, yeah. We don't hide, you know, he's got a sense of humor on that. Here's a cup of coffee. Here's a double espresso to you. My second one, by the way. Whoops. Yes, I could not believe it. Yeah, I can either. But that's why I said that. But to have him come back on that note, you know, I made my night, a life a little bit better. Why not? Let's move on. What else did I have in here in my tweets today that I've captured? You all heard of the story about Artemis, right? Not Artemis and Josh. <laughs> but Artemis. The mission. My dad, John Greenwald Sr., worked on the very engines now called the RS 225s when they flew on the shuttle. That's right. Got to go, my friend. Good night, Brian. They went and recycled shuttle engines for the Artemis, right? Yes, it was scrubbed. Why was it scrubbed? Where was the problem? In the engines, now called the RS-25s that flew on the shuttle. Avi M is saying we should ask for documents that shows that Greenwald's dad worked there. That's exactly what I said in one of my quotes. In my quotes, some of my quotes. That's a new one, quotes. It's a tweet and it's a quote in one, a quote. In one of my tweets. <laughs> yeah. I said, I'm thinking of you, John, when I saw the problems with the engines. Then again, we're going to have to go ahead and verify that your dad actually did work on this piece of the proof. <laughs> but 
it's an amazing story here. Yes, it is. Got to have some fun with it. Ah. Uh, Oh, this is always a great picture to show. I've shown this in the past. According to the Bible, right? And the descriptions we have in the Bible. This is what angels supposedly look like. Bring that down just a little bit here so we can see a little bit more of the whole picture of the scope. Yeah, this is what it looked like when people were supposedly seeing angels in, in the past. That is some creepy ass shit. And they thought these were angels, not the angels we see like Michael the Archangel and with the wings and the whole thing. These do not look human. That looks alien. It doesn't look like an angel of God. I guess that's Ezekiel's wheel. That is just nuts. Nope. Nope. You ain't going to get me. St- I mean, the guy is just standing there looking at this stuff. <laughs> Matt Guffin, yes, I actually saw it this weekend. Yes, nope. It was an interesting movie. I just say nope to the creature at the end. These are actually more interesting, to say the least. But that's okay. We can get through it. Let's move on. What else do we have here in our daily thread of stuff? Oh, let's move on up. Moving on up like the Jeffersons. Ah. Coming from Dave Beatty. He's the guy from the Nimitz Encounters who's gone, did the videos, brought the stuff out there, brought the whole story out. Some interesting things is what he's saying here. Maybe the U.S. Navy could learn a few lessons from the Taiwanese. What is he talking about here? Taiwan says it will now shoot down rogue Chinese drones, right? Now, what Dave is talking about is the UAP that we saw off of the coast of Southern California. Now, here's the thing. Some of the things that they potentially saw were drones and could have come from the Chinese freighter that was there, right? Here's the thing. You're forgiven, Avi. We're good. We're all good. (laughs) Now, my reply to this, we're talking about the drones saying SoCal and also far off the East Coast operas with drones harassing warships without any U.S. Navy counter, right? What I'm saying is potentially, unless the Chinese drones, which we did see there potentially, are there to watch how the U.S. fails to deal with UAP. Because those drones may have been there not to watch our our aircraft and such, or watch our ships, but let's get out there and let's watch and see how those Yankees are going and dealing with the UAP. You know, it's just one of those things we need to dig into further. And as we get more factual evidence, that's what we need are the facts. Just the facts, man. That's all we need is the facts. Enough of the stories that go along with it. Let's see what else we have here. Um, No, we don't need to go into. Okay, so the CEO of Raytheon. Well, let's not get into this one. Raytheon has got some hands in the wrong place. And Raytheon may be one of those contractors that really had their hands within the UAP. Klaus has got some uh, stuff we need to dig in deep and deeper, but it looks like Raytheon has the tendrils necessary to possibly be definitely one of those contractors who was brought into UAP. How is that? There's a book out there called Family, and it deal, it's, it's about power, politics, and fundamentalisms of the shadow elite. And this story deals into the uh, the family, the organization, what happened, where they all went, how they were involved, and how their uh, organization has crumbled over the years. Interesting to uh, dive into. Let's move on. Um, We're on the family on that stuff. I think we're getting kind of there. Now, um, 
sold a Scientific American article refuting the New York Times crash re retrieval story as a clear example of bad faith debunking. What are we talking about? We've got Scientific American. Scientific American is going and quoting Stephen Greenstreet. Yes, my, uh, Majestic 12 turned into another one and turned into another one. Peggy, it's all tied, tied together. Um, I believe there is a link for that file that I had sent to Greg O'Brien. Did I send him the PDF? I might have. No. Oh, here we go. If anyone wants a, a copy of the book, the family, there is a link. Go download it. There you go. PDF, go ahead, grab it. If you had an iPhone, put it to your iBooks or whatever you have for your reader. You have uh, Android, grab it and put it in whatever you have. A desktop, definitely go ahead and grab it and read it when you get a chance. It's going to be a phenomenal story. Let's jump back into this. So Scientific American article refu refuting the New York Times crash retrieval story is a clear example of bad faith debunking. The story doesn't even say anything about the alloys being a mystery. The mystery is about how they were constructed. Well, where's that sound effect that kind of says, where is my opinion of the Scientific American now? Yep. Holy shit! Yes, it's circling the toilet along. <laughs> yes, Raytheon is involved, and so is Monsanto. Time will tell. History will come out. It will show that Monsanto was involved as well. Yes, and Raytheon gets subcontracts with bigger companies too. Absolutely. Thanks for bringing that up, Matt Griffin. I appreciate that. All right. Uh, I think we've got that. I think we've got that. We've got that one. I think we've got the um, majority of the stuff covered today. How about that? We got through in record time with 10 minutes left to go. Any questions today, folks? And ask me anything. Feel free. We got uh, a little bit of time left before we go ahead and knock this one out of the ballpark. But if not, we can just go ahead and jump back into the studio, if you don't mind. Oh, where is that at? Let me find it. Oh, not that one. Here we go back in the studio. Yes, great story today talking about UAPs. We uh, we observed UA UAP everywhere, and they actually did. Blue Cruz says, I need to check out the family book. I went to the provided link. Please get it, download it, share it wherever you can. It's important. What's with that October 31st deadline? Think it'll stick? Well, it's a law, right? But here's the thing. There's a law where they have to be providing information that's historical going back in the distance. Now, they're not providing it. And Congress is rolling over like a frickin' panda. Oh, I'm not going to go ahead and take it. Give us whatever you can give us. We don't need to get it. Come on. Let's go ahead and do that. Oh, that's right. It is midnight in the United Kingdom. and. Even though he's not here. Ah, happy birthday to Gary. Yes, it's one of those times where it's Gary's birthday. <laughs> Come on, Gary, pop up. No, Gary's still asleep right now. Gary's not here, but happy birthday, Gary. It's that time of the day, down to the hour, minute, and second in the United Kingdom. He's 39 years old today. Granted, we'll be able to wish him happy birthday again tomorrow when he's actually here. But hell, he can go ahead and watch this recording and seeing everybody saying happy birthday, Gary, from AVM. This has actually started by Margaret, no, call me Peggy, from Cosmic Hue Toes, from Corey, from Kelly Broad. Happy birthday, Gary. You'd absolutely deserve it. The show's not the same without you. You know, we can't have Target practice here having a fun time marcus mandel happy birthday gary absolutely happy birthday from metal gaming of course coming from the observer yes i've got jeans that are 39 oh happy birthday from matt guffin from george hernandez from sven and speedin from cosmic hue toast and dry toast wait his birth his son's birthday is the 29th which is today hey dry toast is it a dry muffin dry english muffin 
for that matter. But hey, it's not fry muff, but fry toast, you never know. Is he on the ends or is he in the middle? We'll find out. <laughs> Happy birthday from Daryl Zernick and Bill H. And of course, Constantine Dante from Tommy Carter, everybody. Cosmic Hue Toast having some fun here as well. Happy birthday. I need a drink here. Happy birthday to you. One more time. All right. About the other question we had here. Yes, the Flat Earth Society has members all across the globe. Just not here. I hope not. Oh, so what was the question? Oh, yeah, that deadline. October. Are we going to get something out of it? I sure as hell hope so, but I am not going to hold my breath. Because it'll be another year before Gary's birthday hits. No, we're not going to hold our breath on this one. Hopefully, we're going to get something. Because the date they gave us... It's October 31st. Okay. To you. Coming from Blues Cruise, Patrick Fogarty. Happy birthday, Gareth Mangela G. Nathan Torres. Absolutely. What a wonderful a way to go ahead and take out the audience. What a great show today. Kelly Brote. Yeah, a great one. Absolutely. On that note. Stuff in the background. Yes. Oh, God. The Wicked Rich of the East. Don't mention his name. I, I got to be careful if I say it one more time. The flying monkeys are going to be brought in. We don't want to have that. Let's see if I can go ahead and open this up so I can take out the show in proper style. Oh, if I go back to here and I got to here and oh, it's already playing. All right, here we go. Let's go ahead and take out this show in style first. First, I want to go ahead and thank everybody for the wonderful Super Chats today. Holy cow, I'm beside myself. Well, I'm not right now. That was earlier, but got to have some fun with it. Who did we get for Super Chats today? Let's go ahead and take a look. We've got, oh, not that many, from Marcus Mandel. Some drums. There we go. Jake, not from State Farm. And Chad Farmer Davis, thanks for supporting the show. We appreciate it. Oh, God, so much. Uh, hopefully, I'll see you over on uh, Space Start Radio later tonight. Maybe, maybe not, but Science Bob's back. We got to go here. But let's hope they're going to take back that statement about who finds their time and shit was screwed. Get it out of here quick. More importantly, besides thanking the people for the super chat, let's go ahead and thank everybody who's still in the chat. My God, yes, let's do it, shall we? Participants, who we have out there right now, Angela G, Avi M, Bill H, Blues Cruise, Constantine Dante, Cosmic Hue Toast, Daryl Zernick, Dry Toast, Electra RC, George Hernandez, Kelly Broad, Corey is in the house, Mac Guffin, thanks for coming out tonight, Margaret, no call me Peggy, thanks for coming in here Peggy, absolutely would never be the same without you, Marcus Mandel, Metal Gaming, all the way from across the pond, Appreciate you being here, along with Kelly Brout, uh, Nathan Forrest, Nick Christensen. Thanks for coming in, Nick. I think so. <laughs> Patrick Fogarty, Ravenous Ryan, Sven Eric, all the way from Sweden. The Observer, Tommy Carter, and Tommy Missus. I want to thank everybody for coming out here to Disclosure tonight, if I can find that next one to get into here. And... Uh... All right, everybody, we made it. We survived another episode of Disclosure tonight. If I can get this down, turn down just a little bit, turn off the drums. Thanks for coming out today. What a freaking killer show. Appreciate everybody coming out. And as we say at the end of every broadcast, eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone. Go back to Party City where you belong. Absolutely. And we'll catch you on the flip side. See you tomorrow on Two for Tuesday. Good night, everybody. We'll catch you on the flip side. It's not like I don't have anything else going on. No, I'm just going to kick back, sit back in the recliner with Cupcake, and enjoy the evening. I wish you all a wonderful evening. And yeah, I actually had to set up where I can start and stop the stream whenever I want. So I can pop out and I can pop back. <laughs> there we go. So good night, everybody. You have a wonderful time. Happy Monday again. Have a good time. Go uh, give someone a hug. Tell someone you love them. Enjoy the evenings. Get some good rest. And we'll see you tomorrow. Good night.